Just recently, me and my wife made the announcement that after 13 years of our marriage, we are pregnant. And we've been waiting for this blessing from God for 13 years. We've shared different things that we've learned in the process of waiting. And I want to share with you eight things you must do while waiting. Maybe you're waiting for God to give you the answer to your prayer. Maybe you're waiting for the promise of God to come to pass. Perhaps you are waiting for the spouse, for children, for financial breakthrough. Or you're waiting for God to save your children. Maybe you're waiting for the breakthrough in your ministry. I believe that these eight things will set you up not to mess up your waiting season. I have experienced many things in my life in regards to waiting. The one about the child has been probably the longest one. But the one about the ministry, breakthrough in the ministry has always been also very extended period of waiting before I saw the breakthrough that the Lord brought in our ministry and now He's growing. It's like a snowball effect and it's happening in our ministry. The first thing that I want to start with and that is this. Obey the last thing God told you to do. Follow the last directive from God. When God told Noah to build an ark, the Bible says, thus Noah did according to all that God commanded him. So he did it. Genesis chapter 6 verse 22. Noah built the ark. The Bible doesn't exactly tell us how many years it took him. He finished that task even though it was difficult. We don't see God speaking anymore throughout the years that Noah was building the ark. But he was focusing on the last thing God told him to do. Maybe you are in the waiting season. I want to ask you a question. Have you done what God told you to do? Obey in faith even if you don't see the end. Even if that act of obedience you did in faith did not bring any changes, did not bring any results or breakthroughs, remember God blesses obedience. Sometimes we get impatient in waiting and we ignore what God told us to do as a last thing or the last directive. Drop this in the chat. Obey the last thing God told you to do. Somebody else, drop this in the chat. Follow the last directive. Sometimes we want a, the Lord to give us a new instruction. Lord, give us a new direction. Lord, what should we do? Nothing is changing. It seems like we're stuck. And if God doesn't tell you anything new or different, do the last thing He told you to do. Because that last thing that Noah did and then it was a long period of waiting. The rain didn't come. But when Noah finished building the ark, it took him, someone said over a hundred years, long time it took him to build the ark. We don't know for sure how many years. What we do know it was a very long time. We don't see the Lord speaking again. We don't see any changes. We just see a long period of waiting and doing the last thing God told you. The second thing that I want to highlight when you're waiting and that is this, do not make an Ishmael. Drop this in the chat. Don't make an Ishmael. Number two of waiting while waiting, don't make an Ishmael. Abram received the promise of children in Genesis 12. He receives it again in Genesis chapter 15 when God cuts a covenant or makes an agreement with Abram. It was a one-way agreement. Even if Abraham wouldn't keep his side of the bargain, God would keep his. That's why the land of Israel will always belong to descendants of Abraham because God promised him that. Now, the promise of the son, because it was not only the land, but God promised him a child. This promise didn't happen for a, a long time. So Sarah takes things into her own hands and she persuades Abraham 
to father a child with her maid, Hagar, in order to get a child. Wait, God didn't say anything about a child with Hagar. Abram, what are you doing? Eventually, at 100 years of age, Abraham had his promised son, Isaac. Ishmael became the father of the Arab people who are still fighting the descendants of Isaac till this day. Just open any news and you will see Ishmael. You will see Isaac. They are still at war. Why did that happen? Because of Abram's own efforts to fulfill God's promise only resulted in problems and suffering. Don't take matters into your own hands when you are waiting. Don't birth an Ishmael, meaning something out of your own impatience, out of desperation. So many people end up in marriages, Ishmael marriages. They quickly, instead of waiting on God to bring the right person, they find a person that is in contradiction to God's word, in contradiction to the wise counsel of people that they trust, in contradiction to their own peace, but they're desperate. And then they wait on God to change that person and they result in problems and suffering. Almost in everything where you have to wait on God, the devil will come and say, there's a shortcut. All you have to do is do this thing. You know, he told Jesus, there's a shortcut. All you have to do is worship me and you will have all the kingdoms of this world. You no longer have to suffer. You don't have to wait thousands of years when you come back as the Lion of the tribe of Judah, as the Root of Jesse and as the King of Kings and establish God's kingdom on this earth. You can get it right now through a shortcut. Jesus, I know you're hungry. You can fulfill your hunger by a shortcut. You know, use God's power for your own personal benefit. Satan always will give you a shortcut. Waiting is a process of waiting upon God to bring an Isaac, to bring his blessing, his way. That's why waiting is painful because it's not just about God's will being done. It's God's will being done in God's way. Waiting is God's will being done in God's way. Let's drop this in the chat. Waiting is about God's will being done in God's way. When the devil comes, he gives you a shortcut and that shortcut is so that you can birth an Ishmael and bring suffering in your life. What we see happening in Middle East today is Ishmael being born out of impatience, out of taking matters into your own hands. And this Ishmael we see is in war with Isaac. The son of the promise is in war with the son of impatience. And God is merciful. This is not to say that if you are a descendant of Arab or I am part of the Slavic descendants, we're Gentiles, that God doesn't love us, that God doesn't um, care for us, that we're somehow cursed. No, all of us are technically cursed because of descendants of Adam. But in this case, I'm relating to the story of Abraham. He was impatient. He gave birth to Ishmael. Do not give birth to something out of impatience. When you're waiting, you know, thinking about Abraham's story, don't be discouraged when someone gets naturally what requires you by faith, what requires you efforts, walking by faith. Like you, you see so many people in the Bible who seem to have children, you know, immediately, uh, not having any complications because it's a natural process by which God created us. But for people like Sarah, for people like Hannah, for people like Elizabeth, it took him a miracle. It took him breakthrough. It took God's intervention. And sometimes maybe you see that in finances, somebody gets naturally, it just seems like prosperity comes naturally to them. Maybe because of the way their parents raised them, the way their grandparents were doing things with integrity and doing things with education and doing things with connections. And it seems like it's naturally for them to prosper. And But for you, it takes a lot of faith. It takes a lot of perseverance. Don't be discouraged because of that. Don't be jealous of people and don't become impatient because of that. It's okay to be hungry for God's blessing, but never be desperate for God's blessing.
Stay desperate for God. Stay thirsty for God. Somebody drop this in the chat. It's okay to be hungry, but don't be desperate for God's blessing. It is God's desire to bless you. It is God's desire to bring you breakthrough. But He doesn't want you to be desperate for that breakthrough. He wants you to be desperate for Him. Be hungry, meaning desire breakthrough without being desperate because the moment you become desperate what begins to happen is that you can fall into impatience and you can fall into birthing an Ishmael. But when you are desiring it, the Bible says He fulfills the desires of those who delight in Him. So as we delight in the Lord, He purifies our desires and then He fulfills our desires. But delighting yourself in God protects you from being desperate in an unhealthy way because Sarah got desperate for a child and she took a shortcut and turned out that this shortcut produced a lot of suffering. Amen. What happened with Abraham is that God, before He gave him a child, He gave him a promise. Let me say that again. Before God gave Abraham a child, God gave Abraham a promise. Drop this in the chat. Before God gives you a miracle, He will give you a promise. Hold on to that promise. Sometimes we discard the promise. Sometimes we ignore the promise. Sometimes we think that, ah, it's just a promise. When God quickens a word, gives you a vision, a dream, a clear picture of what that future is going to be. That's what vision is. A vision is a desired picture of the future. Vision, drop this in the chat. Vision is a desired picture of the future. It's a picture of the future that's desired, inspired by the Holy Spirit. That's what vision is. And when God gives you that vision, when God gives you that promise, sometimes that's a prerequisite. Sometimes that's like the John the Baptist. It's what's coming before the miracle. Like in our case with me and my wife, I knew about eight to nine years ago that the Lord wants to give us a child. In fact, not only I knew that, I had a very clear picture of a gender and the name. Told my wife about it. We prayed about it. We thanked God for it. And it took years before that became a reality. But God gave Abraham a promise way before he gave him a child. In fact, this promise was so real that Abraham was asked by God to change his name to match the promise, not his current problem. This wasn't some mental gymnastics. This wasn't just the power of visualization or some kind of a, a power of a attraction, love attraction like the New Ages teach. This was God teaching Abraham faith. Abraham is called the father of faith. How was this faith given? God has a covenant with his servant Abraham. He gives him a promise and then God comes and says, this is going to happen. I want you to change your name. No longer call yourself glorious father, but call yourself father of many nations. And also go change your wife's name. Instead of calling her, you know, the queen, the princess, I want her to be the mother of nations. And for years, Abraham walks around with the changed name, but his circumstances were not changed. And I wonder if that's how the Lord works with many of us. He gives us a promise. This promise is so real in our spirit, in the spirit realm and we hold on to it and we walk with that promise. We see ourselves already in that promise with our sanctified imagination, not some mental gymnastics but with our sanctified imagination. So if God gave you a promise, that's one way of knowing breakthroughs on the way. Let me give you an example. There was a time when me and my wife decided to give our second car and we had a couple in our church that just lost their vehicle in a car accident. They had children and they needed a car. I knew that financially they were struggling, that things, you know, things were difficult for them. And me and my wife were going to Fred Meyers on Saturday night, just kind of doing some shopping and felt inspired by the Lord, both of us, to give our car to this couple. Now that, that was the only car we had. But it was a nice car, Toyota Camry. It was brand new when I bought it. I paid it off and 
we meet with this couple the next day at our house and we give them this promise we say we want to give you this car they said which car because they knew we only had one we said well the car that we have they're like the only car that you have yes and i said but i can't give it to you right now because i want to change my bumper because the bumper had a lot of bugs there and paint kind of peeled off and secondly i want to change tires and get an alignment meaning i want to improve the quality of the car ch change oil and then we will give it to you so they started to cry they broke down they said that's so precious that's nobody's ever done this da, da, da. and so they were so grateful and the moment they left our house they left with the car but they never got the keys yet they told their family hey we got a car and when the family said where's the car uh it's um uh, it's coming what do you mean you got a car but you don't have a car well we have a promise from this person that we trust and that promise is true because this person will not lie to us and that person was me and my wife and they believed us they acted as though they already had a car though they didn't have a car they stopped shopping for a car and they stopped being worried they became at rest that it's going to be taken care of a month and a half later when the bumper was fixed tires were changed oil was changed on friday night prayer we came and brought them the keys gave them the title but they received the car when they received the promise mm, that's a word for somebody right there they received the car when they received the promise when i gave them the promise that i will give them the car that's when the transfer happened but the physical receiving possessing of the car happened a month and a half later what if I were to tell you when God gives you a promise inspired by the Holy Spirit, quickened by the Holy Spirit, that rhema word, you became the possessor of that promise. But then you go through the process, the season of waiting. When now you will get what you got, meaning you will receive what you already are possessor of. Maybe it's healing. Maybe it's deliverance. Maybe it's breakthrough. God doesn't exaggerate. God doesn't throw words in the wind. The Holy Spirit doesn't say things He doesn't mean. Trust His promise. Hold on to that promise. Because sometimes God gives you a promise before He gives you a miracle. Hold on to that promise. Because that's a sign that the miracle is on the, on the way. In fact, the word in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, where it says the faith is... A substance of things hoped for and an assurance uh, faith is a substance of things hoped for the word substance there is really that word that it's it's a title deed it's a title deed of things hoped for see faith is not hoping it's gonna happen faith is having that which God promised already here in my heart how do I get that he promised and I trust God's promises so faith is a substance, it's a title deed, it's I have it, I'm not hoping for it, I have it. That's what faith is, He gave me a promise, I trust Him and I have it. But I can't see it, yes not yet, but when the woman is pregnant, you don't see her baby, but she has a baby, the baby is growing. So that's what God's promise, it's that spiritual like almost like a conception spiritually, where in your spirit you take the seed of God's promise and it grows inside. You believe, you have, you stand on the promise. You go from hoping to having. Come on somebody, drop this in the chat. When you get the promise, you go from hoping to having that promise. And then you get that miracle. You get that breakthrough. This is helping somebody, drop number one in the chat if this is helping somebody. If you are re-watching this right now, don't forget to hit like to this stream. If you are just tuning in and this is helping somebody, share this with somebody right now. Hit like to this uh, video and drop in the chat if you are re-watching. But for most of you, we are live right now so you are watching this. We already shared number one, if you're waiting, obey the last thing that God told you. Number two, don't make an Ishmael out of impatience. Sometimes God will give you a promise before He gives you a miracle. 
trust in that promise. Let's go to number three. Don't go outside of the bounds of your assignment when you're waiting on God. Drop this in the chat. Don't go outside the bounds of your assignment when you're waiting on God. Example is King Saul, chapter 13, 1 Samuel chapter 13, verses 7 through 11. Saul was in danger and hoping to get help from Prophet Samuel. Saul saw that people were scattering from him and he decided to take things again into his own hands. Now as Abraham, he went and got an Ishmael, Saul had another problem. He waited wrongly. He offered the sacrifice which only Samuel should have offered. Saul was impatient and stepped outside of the bounds of his authority and calling. Don't be like Saul. Don't do what God has not authorized you to do. Don't take on more than what God told you to do. Don't out of impatience step out of where God has planted you, placed you and asked you to wait for Him. Sometimes what we do in waiting is we move from the place God told us to wait on Him. And we go into the place where God never told us to go into. Sometimes we go into those places because somebody else is doing that. Sometimes we go into those places is because people tell us to do that. Sometimes we go into those places because we think we can speed things up. We step out of the place of where we were placed to be in. Because we're frustrated. Because we're impatient. Because we're tired of waiting. And we leave. Those five foolish virgins, they didn't wait for the bridegroom. They ran out of oil. And when the bridegroom arrived, they were not there to meet him because they left the place of waiting. Jesus told his disciples, he says, wait in Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit didn't come where they were, Nazareth, you know, Galilee. No, he came to Jerusalem and they had to wait there. Now, 500 people saw Jesus ascend to heaven. But 120 were there when the Holy Spirit came. Where were the rest of the people? They left that place of waiting. They left the place that Jesus told them to be at. When you step out of the place of your calling, when you start out, step out of the place of what you were assigned by God and you go into something just because it's an opportunity that presents itself, just because, well, it seemed good. Not everything that's good is God. And sometimes what's good will fight against what's really God asking you to do. When you're in waiting, stay where you're planted. Stay where you were placed by God. Wait for His instruction. It may seem like these other things are greener pastures. These other things can provide so much more blessings and resources. But that's what happened to Lot. Lot Instead of being with Abraham, he took on his own ability to provide for himself and said, no, I'm just going to go to something better, more spacious space and found himself in some green pastures. The Bible says it looked like Garden of Eden, but it was Sodom and Gomorrah. And at first it seemed like, oh man, he got a you know, big breakthrough. But then you read the story of him losing everything, including his family, his wife and hiding in caves and never recovering what he lost. What would have happened if he would have stayed where he was placed, stayed where he was planted, stayed close to his uncle? Maybe those things would have not happened. Stay where you're planted when you're waiting. Don't uproot yourself. Don't become this plant that keeps getting replanted to different pot, uh, pots and you're losing your, your, your grace. You're losing that anointing. <laughs> Stay where you're planted. Wait on God. Yes, things are maybe getting worse and you feel like, I need to do something. Sometimes the hardest thing you need to do is to do nothing and to trust in God. Because if that's where He placed you, if that's where He planted you, if that's what He asked you to be, stay there. He will come 
probably late but God is always on time which means he's always late what do you mean late yeah he never comes on my time he always comes on his time the vision the Bible says in Habakkuk chapter 3 it says though it tarries wait for it and then it says it won't tarry okay I don't get it how is that the vision tarries meaning it takes too long and then it won't tarry that means God is always on time and he's always late meaning he will never come on your time he will come on his time and that is good for us because it reminds us to not give up Mary and Martha waited for Jesus to come he came late but he didn't come late he came on time Jesus came to Jairus's house too late that's according to Jairus's clock but he came on time God came to Abraham and Sarah seemed like too late they were too old to have children but God came on time he came too late for Zechariah and for his wife Elizabeth but he came on time just remember Jesus will probably be late and on time late according to you on time according to him so when it feels like the Lord did not come on time it simply means he didn't come on your time and most likely your time and his time are not synced even right now I can ask you this those of you watching in the chat but let's 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 do this tell me right now in the comments what time it is where you are watching now if you are re-watching let me know that as well but if you're watching go ahead and tell me what time it is right now where you are watching and we will see something how all of us on the different parts of the world live in a different time zone look 11 o'clock 9 o'clock 12 o'clock look at the different time zones right now coming up in the chat but all of us are living on this earth in a different time zone what if I were to tell you God does not live on your time zone Ooh, what a word drop this in the chat God does not live on your time zone he has his supernatural time zone that he lives in so don't be surprised if God doesn't make it his breakthrough doesn't come in your time zone God's miracle is connected to God's timing and God's timing is not always synced with your time zone so trust him if it doesn't come in your time trust him that it comes on his time and he knows what he's doing and is coming to you on his time come on somebody so let's review what to do while waiting obey the last thing God told you to do number two don't make an Ishmael number three don't go outside the bounds of your assignment number four be patient in hope drop this in the chat number four be patient in hope Psalm 40 verses 1 to 3 I waited patiently that means what waiting will do is create patience I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry he also brought me up out of the horrible pit out of the miry clay he set my feet upon a rock and established my steps he has put a new song in my mouth praise to our God many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord David is saying I waited patiently it's possible to wait on God without being patient. In fact, one thing waiting will produce is patience. One thing that God one reason why God allows waiting is to produce patience. Drop this in the chat. Waiting produces patience. In fact, I don't think patience can be produced any other way except waiting. God cannot produce probably patience just because you read the word. You got to wait for something. Even James 1, 2 and 3 tells us that brethren, as you fall into various trials, remember God is producing, these are producing patience. 
So what do we do is that we wait patiently in hope. That's what David says, I wait patiently for the Lord. I'm not just waiting for a breakthrough, I'm waiting for God, the God of breakthrough to come. Also, I love this about David, he says it's okay to cry. Sometimes when you are waiting and you are waiting patiently and it's too long, you cry. It's not because you lack faith, it's because you're human and it's okay to cry. It's okay to ask questions. It's okay to feel that and let God know how you feel. You don't need to bottle it up and pretend to be spiritually macho, spiritual macho. It's okay to let God know. Lord, I am tired of waiting. Lord, I am hurting. And then David begins to prophetically speak. He brought me out of the horrible pit. That means don't be discouraged by the trouble you're in. He will bring you out. In fact, I just want to prophetically use this scripture to speak that into your life. He can bring you out. He will bring you out. Your deliverance is on the way. That breakthrough is on the way. That healing is on the way. That salvation is on the way for your family members. That breakthrough for your ministry is on the way. He will take you out of the pit. He will take you out of the miry clay. He will establish your feet upon the rock. He will establish your steps. He will put a new song in your mouth. He will give you, you will go from complaining to praising. You will go from fear to faith. You will go from trials to transformation. You will go from difficulties to destiny. You will go from hardship into blessing because you've been waiting patiently for the Lord. So remember, waiting builds patience. Waiting produces patience and patience is crucial because it forms your character. It builds maturity. Patience is important because then when you get that breakthrough, it doesn't go into your head because character has been built. It doesn't destroy you, your blessing, because you've been built in maturity. And I believe you cannot really be mature if you are impatient. Patience will be built in waiting. I waited patiently for the Lord. Praise be to God. Let's review. When you are waiting, these eight things we need to do. Obey the last thing God told you. Don't make an Ishmael. Don't go outside of the bounds of your assignment, number three. Number four, be patient in hope. Number five, grow and become strong. Drop this in the chat, grow and become strong. Luke chapter 1 verse 80, it says, So the child grew and became strong in the spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his manifestation to Israel. While John was in the desert waiting until God manifests him, puts him on the pedestal, puts him into his ministry for which he was born, he did not become atrophy. He didn't waste away, lose vigor due to underuse or neglect. He didn't just was passive. He built something, grew in the spirit and became strong. Don't be lazy in the desert of your life. Come on somebody, drop this in the chat. Don't be lazy in the desert of your life. Grow and become strong while you wait. God told Israelites, I will not drive out the enemies in the promised land in one year. But He said little by little until you increase. Meaning I want you to grow and as you grow, I'm going to begin to prepare you and take you in into the promised land. When you are waiting for the promise, when you are waiting for the fulfillment of that promise, when you're waiting for that destiny, remember in the process God will develop you. So not only He develops patience but He develops your gifts. 
He develops your habits. He develops your righteousness. He develops your holiness. He develops your holy, uh, your holy habits. He develops your disciplines. He develops your skills. He develops you. you. It's a learning process. This is not just you folded your hands and you're just like, hey, I'm just waiting until God calls my number. I'm just waiting until God gives me breakthrough. No, no, no. John didn't just in the wilderness wait. He grew and became strong. Don't waste your waiting by becoming lazy. This is so good. Drop this in the chat. Don't waste your waiting by becoming lazy in your desert. I'm going to repeat that again. Don't waste your waiting by becoming lazy in your wilderness time. Your wilderness time is not a time to waste. It's not a time to wait passively. You have to wait by growing in your wilderness. John the Baptist grew while he waited for his time to come to be manifested to Israel as the Bible says. He grew strong and he also became strong. Don't waste your waiting by being lazy in your desert time. Yes, you're discouraged. Yes, it's hard. But take those classes. Learn those skills. Start writing. Go on that run. Go on that walk. Get involved in the local church. Serve. You know what waiters do in the restaurant? They don't sit. They serve. Do what waiters do when you wait on God. Serve. Mm. Drop this in the chat. Do what waiters do when you wait. Serve God. See, waiting on God is not passive, just patiently, passively killing time. Waiting on God is serving God actively in what you know He wants you to do. You know, when we were waiting to hear the news that we will have a child, we didn't wait 13 years by passively, idly doing nothing. You know, I wrote books, preached. We loved each other. I told my wife, you know, we didn't marry so that we can have children. We married so because we loved each other and children come as a result. We served. In fact, serve as you wait is the best way to not allow waiting to become a time when you are lazy. So many people waste their waiting because they think waiting is killing time. Waiting is not killing time. Waiting is doing what waiters do in the restaurant. They serve. Serve when you wait. Grow when you wait. Develop your gifts. Develop your hunger as you wait. Don't waste your waiting. Somebody drop this in the chat. Don't waste your waiting. Wow, we're about to break 2,000 people on YouTube watching live. If you're just tuning in, hit that like button, share this because this is helping a lot of people already. I know this is a word for somebody. It probably took me 13 years to release this word to you guys. And so go ahead and share this online with somebody right now that, hey, join Pastor Vlad um, as he's teaching this word right now that is just, just bringing fuel to the fire. So we're talking about while waiting. Eight things we need to do. Let's review. Obey the last thing God told you. Number two, do not make an Ishmael. Number three, don't go outside of the bounds of your assignment. Number four, be patient in hope. Number five, grow and become strong. Don't waste your waiting by killing time. Develop your gifts and skills. Number six, maintain your relationship with the Holy Spirit. So number six thing that you need to do while waiting is maintain your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Simon or Simeon, he was told by God he's not going to die until he sees the child Jesus, the Lord's Christ. Imagine getting a prophetic word. Imagine getting a word from God. You're not going to die until you see Messiah. So Simon, 
you know, Simeon, he goes to the temple. The Bible says that day it was, it was revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he will not see death until he would see Christ, Lord's Christ. And that's in Luke chapter 2. And then the Bible says is that he would go to the temple full of the Holy Spirit. So it says, so he came by the Spirit into the temple. That's Luke chapter 2 verses 25 to 28. And then the parents bring the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law. Simeon had the Spirit of God upon him. He, this man of God, he received the revelation from the Holy Spirit and he goes to see and hold the very thing he was promised. Why? Because he was waiting and maintaining relationship with the Holy Spirit. Please hear my heart. As you are waiting on the breakthrough, begin to develop friendship with the Holy Spirit. Intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Communion with the Holy Spirit. A little shameless plug. Get this book. Download it on my website or get it on Amazon. It will help you to know the Holy Spirit as a person. This man, man of God, he was devout and just, waiting for God's breakthrough. And God's Spirit was upon him. He was led by the Spirit. He heard the Holy Spirit. Because waiting time is not wasted when you are developing relationship with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you're done developing your gifts. You've done developing your ministry. You've done doing everything you can. And you may say, what do I do? In which other way, Vlad, can I serve? Develop relationship with the Holy Spirit. Talk to the Holy Spirit. Hear the Holy Spirit. Walk in the Holy Spirit. Host the Holy Spirit. Because he is going to be the one who will give you the specific instructions on when and what to do when the time for the fulfillment of that promise draws near. He will be the one to guide you. He will be the one to comfort you. He will be the one to strengthen you. Can somebody say Amen? If you love the Holy Spirit, drop the fire emoji in the chat right now. The Holy Spirit is your comforter, your friend, Drop that fire emoji right now in the chat. You know, when I was waiting for that breakthrough to hit Hungry Jen, that's when I started to really develop the relationship with the Holy Spirit. I would walk before having the youth service and in my heart I would see the sanctuary being filled with young people. It wasn't true in real life, but it was true in my spirit. And then I would cry. The Holy Spirit would fill me with these visions because visions and dreams are the language of the Holy Spirit. So I would see this in my vision. I would see this in my, in my, in my heart's dream. It wasn't my ambition. It was His dream. And through that, I would cultivate that relationship with Him. I would close my eyes and reflect on His promises. Talk to Him and I say, Holy Spirit, I trust You that You will bring this miracle. I trust You that You will bring this breakthrough. I wouldn't see anything happening yet but I would develop that relationship, see that vision through my sanctified imagination and then slowly and slowly like a, and like a pregnant woman, like a pregnant, not pregnant woman because I wasn't a woman and I wasn't pregnant, but like a pregnant woman in my spirit I would begin to see that vision grow, become more real and then exactly what the Holy Spirit would show with time it was becoming actualized right in front of my eyes. Like I went to the mountain um, last week, Monday, uh, Sunday night, Monday and Tuesday and I have a journal where I write different things that the Holy Spirit um, shows to me and there's not too many of them but they're pretty real to me and, and I saw one more thing that I saw that's going to happen in our building before we move into a new building and I wrote that down about a year ago. And man, when I saw that, I was like, oh my goodness, we're so much closer to that now than we were a year ago. I am so amazed of how amazing the Holy Spirit is. He is guiding me through the process of waiting. The Holy Spirit is speaking. The Holy Spirit is comforting. The Holy Spirit is leading. So I maintain 
relationship with the Holy Spirit in the process of waiting. Like this man of God did when the Holy Spirit revealed to him, you will see God's Christ, you will see God's Son and by the Holy Spirit he came to the temple. So if you want to see the fulfillment of those promises given to you by the Holy Spirit, walk in the Holy Spirit. He is the key to help you get to that. That's why I wrote the book, Host the Holy Ghost, to help people maintain a relationship with the Holy Spirit because a lot of people, what they do is they, they know about the Holy Spirit but they don't know, they don't have a relationship with Him. They don't have a relationship with the third person of the Trinity. And my desire is to put this understanding of the relationship with the Holy Spirit on the bottom shelf where everybody can understand it and walk in it and live in it. And I pray that it becomes a blessing to your life in Jesus' name. Now, two more things that I wanted to share. Number seven is rest. You have to rest when you are waiting. Drop this in the chat. Rest when you are waiting. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 9 through 11. It says that when God opened the fifth seal, He saw on the... John says, I saw under the altar the souls of those who have been slain for the Word of God and for the testimony that they held. They cried out with a loud voice, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? And then a white rope was given to each one of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer. Hmm. Drop this in the chat. Rest a little while longer. Rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellows and servants and their brethren who have been killed as they were was completed. Don't be agitated and restless when you wait. It only hurts you. Be at peace until God's plan plays out, until all that God plans to happen, happens. Rest. God got you. I like to tell people that trust in Him. Trust is this passive confidence. God got you. Faith is more of active confidence that you got God. You got hold of God. You got hold of the promise. But trust is this restful reliance. You know when you sit, when I sit on a chair right now, I'm resting on this chair. It holds me. When you're flying in the airplane, you know, the pilot is guiding the plane. You don't check his credentials. You don't have an interview with him before the flight. You trust in him and the way you exhibit, you portray, manifest your trust is you sit on that chair in your seat and you restfully wait for him to get you to that destination. Well, God is your pilot. Trust in His promise by resting. Don't become restless, agitated, impatient. That only hurts you. That only hurts you. Rest a little while longer. Maybe just a little bit longer. Rest. Don't become restless. Come on somebody. Rest a little while longer. He is faithful who began the good work. He will complete it until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, until the breakthrough is coming. Now the final thing that I want to share with you and that is this, prayer is how we wait for the promise. Prayer is how we wait for the promise. Jesus says in Acts chapter 4 that do not depart Jerusalem but wait for the promise. And then 10 verses later, how do disciples wait? The Bible says these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. Drop this in the chat. Prayer is how we wait for the promise. So let's review this. Eight things we must do while waiting. Number one, obey the last thing God told you. Follow God's last directive. Obey in faith even if you don't see the end. Number two, don't make an Ishmael. Don't out of impatience and desperation and discouragement, step out into the flesh and do something of your own ability. Number three, do not go outside of the bounds of your assignment. Stay where you're planted. 
Don't do what God has not authorized you like King Saul did. Number four, be patient in hope. Remember, waiting builds patience. And as you are waiting, be patient because God is building that. Number five, grow and become strong. Like John the Baptist, he was growing in wilderness. Don't waste your wilderness seasons. Do what waiters do in the restaurant. Serve. That's how you don't waste your waiting. Number six, maintain relationship with the Holy Spirit. As Simeon, he was reminded by God, he was told by God he will see the Christ. But it's by the Holy Spirit he came to the temple. That's where he saw Christ. When you walk in the Holy Spirit, he leads you into those promises becoming real. Number seven, rest while you're waiting. Rest a little while longer. As those people who were killed were crying out, Lord, when, when, when are you going to come through for us? And he says, rest a little longer. So rest in God, trusting He got you. And number eight, like disciples were promised of the Holy Spirit coming. And Jesus says to wait in Jerusalem. The way they waited is through prayer. So prayer is how we wait for the promise. Waiting will always feel like wasting, killing time if you're not praying. Amen. Has this been helpful to anybody? Drop number one in the chat. Let's begin to pray right now. I want to pray. Drop a prayer emoji in the chat as well. If you're just tuning in right now, logging in and you are on YouTube, don't forget to hit like to the stream. And if you are re-watching also, share in the stream that you are re-watching or if you're listening on the podcast uh, down the road. We love and appreciate you. I want to take a moment right now and pray for you. The precious Holy Spirit is going to come and strengthen your waiting. I know many of you have been waiting for so long. Today the Lord is going to strengthen. He's going to pour some water on that desert. He's going to pour some grace. Lord, we thank you. Holy Spirit, I thank you for your presence right now. Lord, I ask you for every person that is watching this stream, re-watching this, listening to this. Lord, they are waiting for the promise promises you made to each and every one of them. Lord, as you did it for me and my wife, as you did it for Hungry Jen, as you did it for many, many areas of our life, I ask you right now, Holy Spirit, would you come powerfully into their life right now? I ask you, God, would you strengthen those who are weak? I ask you, Lord, would you encourage those that are battling illness, attacks and they are tired of waiting. Lord, would you produce patience? Lord, I ask you, would you help them to be obedient to the last thing you told them? Lord, would you help them not to lose hope? Would you help them to wait patiently on you? Would you help them not to be passive, lazy, but to serve and stay active? Lord Jesus, I ask you, would you help them to walk in the Holy Spirit as they are waiting for the promise. Help them to walk in the promise. Walk, walk in the presence as they walk in the promise. Lord, I also ask you for those that maybe became prayerless as they are waiting because they got discouraged. Help them not to be so desperate that they birth Ishmael and they birth things that are not from you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Dear Holy Spirit, I just pray for rest to come right now for those who are agitated, restless, impatient, struggling and hurting in the name of Jesus. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, help us Lord. Strengthen us Lord. I will wait upon the Lord and He will renew my strength. Those who wait upon the Lord, they renew, they will renew their strength as you wait upon God. Walk in His presence. Walk in that process of Him developing you, strengthening you and blessing you. He will pull you out. He will come through. Your day of breakthrough is coming. Your day of healing is coming. That shift is coming. That shift is coming in Jesus' name.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I feel tangible presence of the Lord Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit in this stream right now. Just receive that. Receive that from the Lord. Receive that from Jesus right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Drop this in the chat. Breakthrough is coming. Because it is. Breakthrough is coming. Thank you, Lord. Breakthrough is coming. I want to now invite you if this stream was a blessing to you, would you consider sowing into this word, into this ministry? As a ministry, we provide all of our content free of charge. And we provide e-courses, books, reading plans, uh, preachings um, in Spanish language, a YouTube channel, in Russian language YouTube channel. and. We are able to do that because of your giving. So I wanted to say first and foremost, thank you for every person that's, that has ever given to this ministry. I want to say thank you to all the partners and I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow at our partners uh, Zoom call. And if you have never given or you have never become a partner and you are able to, if God has blessed you financially, I want to ask you to prayerfully consider becoming a partner with our ministry or to give one time if that's what the Lord puts on your heart. You don't need to do that. Um, you don't, um, how shall I say, uh, it's our gift and our pleasure to bring these streams. And we will continue to do that because God will provide for this ministry. We're not desperate, we trust in God. And so, but I do want to partner with you. For those of you who especially love this ministry, you believe what the Lord is doing, you love the fact that we offer all of that for free of charge to people and um, our courses with over a hundred thousand students in it and we provide books and all of that stuff so a lot of you're like man I love that I appreciate that and so just join us as well so that you can be a part of that that would mean a lot to us and those of you who received this word today and you know don't just dine and <laughs> dash uh, I want to encourage you to uh, sow into this ministry for the glory of God so appreciate you thank you and God bless you.